Today, Scott Sharp has a chance to clinch the second Trans Am Championship of his young racing career as he and 37 challengers await the green flag at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. It is a picture-perfect autumn afternoon in central Ohio as we welcome you to the great racing circuit at Mid-Ohio. The scene today of the 13th round of the 14-race 1993 SCCA Trans Am Tour. Hello, I'm Gary Gerald, and as this Trans Am season winds down, two great opportunities on the line today. Two championship titles up for grabs for Scott Sharp and for Chevrolet. For Sharp, he's been on a tremendous roll through this season, has won the last three races, five of the last six, but for a man who has started in the pole eight times this year, today he has to be satisfied with a third row start. Now, Derek Daly, as usual, joins us as our driving expert. The question, Derek, is this a sign that there's a chink in the armor of Scott Sharp, or is it just being conservative and trying to win the title? I don't think it's either, really, because in qualifying, he actually used the harder Goodyear tire, the 600, which has less grip, because I think he was setting up, instead of just for the short qualifying run, for the longer race run. Now, this could be his second championship in three years. What would this title mean at this point in a young racing career? Well, I, I think when you win a championship, you demonstrate to your potential employers of the future that not only do you possess the outright speed, but you also have the consistency to win championships. In Scott Sharp's case, it is working because just last week on the west side of Indianapolis, he tested for the second time an IndyCar. So it looks very likely that Scott Sharp can use the platform of Trans Am Racing to move on and maybe contest for the IndyCar World Series very soon. Well, you talk about speed. We've seen great speed. 11 drivers under the old track record in qualifying. And the fastest of that group, Tommy Archer, with his first career pole for Dodge. Just minutes ago, the third member of our broadcast team, Jan Bikas, spoke with Tommy. Gary, this is a special day for Tommy Archer. He scores his first ever pole position for Trans Am. Tommy, your competitors have said for you to get the pole, you had to get sideways in every corner, bounce off the curbs, and use soft tires they say you can't do that in the race how do you answer that challenge well the way i look at it right now is i i have a such an advantage after qualifying i can afford to back off a half a second and still be fast so you know it was sideways in a few of the corners but uh, the crew has the car dialed so well that you know i just had to drive it around and um, although i did say to the crew that they really did want to be there for that lap too but it was a it was a heck of a ride out there and uh, nice to have the shell zone dodge up front so the thoughts of a very competent Tommy Archer as he gets ready to lead this field from the pole position for the first time in his Trans Am career. Alongside on the Chevy Camaro, Jack Baldwin, the defending series champion, looking for his first win of the season in the second row. Paul Gentilosi is back in a brand new chassis of his own design. He's been very fast. George Robinson with a great qualifying effort in the Camaro alongside. In row three, Sharp, the man of the hour, trying to wrap up the championship, and the man he's trying to hold off right alongside Canadian Ron Fellows. Mitch Wright, in a heated battle for Rookie of the Year honors, starts in row four alongside Irv Hare. In the fifth row, Bobby Archer, fast in the final practice session alongside R.K. Smith in his debut appearance this year. Former champion Dorsey Schrader headlines row six. Jeff Kerner, another in the rookie battle with Wright alongside. Saunders and Musser in the seventh row, and we check on down through a 38-car field. And as we get toward the back of the pack, keep an eye on where Greg Pickett, the defending champion of Mid-Ohio, will start this one. His car disqualified after a tech inspection following qualifying. It was fractions of an inch too low. It didn't meet the minimum ride height rule, and so consequently his time was tossed out, and he will start outside row 19 in the 38th position keep an eye on greg pickett he's won here twice in the past this is a classic racing circuit derek we were at elkhart lake the long fast course this one much more a rhythm type of track it really is there's a variety of mainly medium speed corners here with very sudden and abrupt elevation changes that we'll see particularly from our in-car cameras bit of an unusual track in as far as it demands a finesse and a rhythm to be consistently fast here at mid-ohio we'll have opportunities to see 
varied onboard shops today. Now this is on board Ron Fellows in the Glory Racing Mustang. He's starting in the third row alongside Sharp. Get an opportunity to look forward from his car. We have other onboard cameras today that will give you a variety of different looks at this very colorful field as they get some temperature into the tires. This is one of those interesting looks. For the first time this year, we'll get a look now at the footwork of Tommy Archer as he'll be on and off the throttle and on and off the brakes throughout this very demanding 2.25 mile circuit. From the roof and looking backwards from the Hot Wheels Camaro of Jack Baldwin, who starts alongside Archer in the front row. Now they start this race on the back stretch and the field now forming up, having come through the carousel, starting to move downhill, beginning to build up a little bit of speed, nicely aligned now, ready for 100 miles of racing at mid-Ohio. And they get ready to jump on the hammer, full song, momentarily looking for the green flag. The green has been displayed, and we are racing at mid-Ohio. Archer gets the break. Here comes Baldwin, though, looking for his first win of the year. They're side by side. Who's going to give? Into that first corner, still rubbing on each other, and Baldwin gets the advantage as they sort for position back through the pack. Well, you definitely saw some muscle there from the Bear himself, Jack Baldwin. They were actually bagging off each other into turn one. Baldwin knew if he could stay side by side with the Dodge at turn one, he could lead when he got up the hill at turn left. That's exactly what he did. A super start for Jack Baldwin. Focused, very hungry. He is determined to get a victory before this season is over as the defending series champion. If he gets the initial break and immediately opens up a three-car length at advantage. Archer trying to whittle it back. Now they'll come to the run to start finish line in the front straightaway. And the official scoring begins at this point in single file procession. Gentilosi running in third place, Robinson fourth, Sharp is fifth, Fellows is sixth as that single file freight train goes by now and they'll sweep into turn number one. There's Pickett. You can see the number six car coming into our full view now. Started from the back. He started 38. He's already in 30th position in a half lap. He gained eight spots. And a whole slew of cars. He slides past. Here he goes again down the inside. One of the Ford Mustangs. Does he make it? Yes, he slides down the inside. But Greg Pickett has a monumental task to try and get past a lot of these slower cars before he can get over the leaders where he should have been. Pickett on the move, the Cytomax Camaro. He won this race here last year. He won in 1986. Started 38, now passes Bruce Barkaloo. And look at this, Scott Sharp is off course. The man who has a championship on the line has lost the line for the moment. And now look at the car screaming by as he gets back. Pickett, in fact, goes by. So Sharp is way, way back in the pack. He gets it back into the competition, and he's got to be back somewhere around 30th position. So what a dramatic change here in the first two laps as Scott Sharp, with championship hopes at stake, finds a problem in the early going. We're going to look very closely at that car to see do we see any telltale signs of contact with somebody else. I would almost bet you it was contact because Scott Sharp is not prone to making mistakes in situations like this. We see him go outside the car trying to make up lots and lots of positions now. Now we don't know what happened as he went off course, but he got it back straightened up, and now he comes to the front straightaway, and he is far back in the field. Remember, he started in the fifth position. He's currently listed 28th, so he lost 23 spots in that off-road excursion. Now we go back up front. The view from the leader looking back off the car of Jack Baldwin. And he has been in the hot set of wheels all weekend. Look at Gentle Ozzy trying to get down the inside of the Dodge of Tommy Archer. Gentle Ozzy, who has been an infrequent runner in the Trans Am circuit this year, but a man who is always a contender when he is out, debuting a brand new race car this week. And he is looking strong as he races third in the early laps here at Mid-Ohio. Jack Baldwin is our leader. Tommy Archer is second. We'll be back with more from Mid-Ohio right after these messages. Jumping into second place with the challenge is Paul Gentilosi. He slid inside. Tommy Archer has taken over the second spot. Archer banging to the back bumper, trying to get it back from him. But right now, Gentilosi has moved into second place. Your leader continues to be Baldwin, but he's got a new challenge. And Gentilosi tried to pull that move on the last lap he didn't pull it off but he knew where archer's weak spot was and he and he made a decisive move down the inside now and he catch jack baldwin 
the older version Chevrolet versus the newer version, not in body style, but in overall design. And a great incentive for Gentilosi today because as one of the independent Chevy Camaro drivers, should he win this race as a non-factory team, he would pick up nearly $28,000 in bonus money. That's a healthy incentive. Oh, no, it is. He's never won here at Mid-Ohio. He's always been a front runner. He's been on the pole. He's had second place finishes. He never managed to stand in the number one spot on the victory roster. But he may have the car under him today to try and make that challenge. Look at Tommy Archer, though. He is not letting go of that second place. We've got a dog fight up front. And right now, it seems to be a three-car battle. Now, let's check in on the problems of Scott Sharp as we go to the pit road and gone beacons. Gary, we checked in with the crew and Scott radioed in and said that in fact, when he got on the brakes, the brakes locked up very easily. That's what caused him to go off the course. He then radioed in that the problem is still there. He's gonna have to be very easy on the brakes, but now that he knows what that problem is, he should be able to move through the field. Locking in the brakes, that was the problem for Sharp. We saw the concern on the look of the faces of the rain -X crew. Well, we said that he's not prone to making mistakes. When you lock up those rear brakes, so sometimes there is no option but to fly off the road. Luckily, there was enough runoff area that he didn't do any damage to the car. But if he's grappling with those locking rear brakes still, he could have a long afternoon. You see him get sideways there and turns left to go over the hill. Now he's in 22nd position, so he's gained six spots from the incident that pushed him back to 28. The Rain-X Camaro, the bright yellow colors of Scott Sharp. He has been on a tremendous roll this season, coming up behind rookie driver Mark Unicom. He was the runner-up of the Bob Bondurant Pro Search Challenge, and he has arrived for the first time in Trans Am competition in that 12 car right in front of Sharp. And he understands racing lines because as he got on the brakes for the keyhole, you could see he held his line. Scott Sharp tried to have a little look down the inside, but there wasn't enough room. But there's a lesson there for Unicom as Scott Sharp comes down the inside. Greg Pickett leads this particular group. R.J. Valentine is there, John Gooding, and then Scott Sharp. A heated battle. Gooding, in fact, cooking a break, but he gets the position on Valentine and slides through to gain a spot. So you've got a couple of contenders. Here's Sharp again, trying to pick up another spot. You've got Pickett and Sharp deep in the pack, trying to make a bold run to somehow get back within hailing distance of the leaders. It's Baldwin still on top, but great racing way back in mid pack. Okay, but as regards the championship, remember the contenders are Scott Sharp, and Ron Fellows. So Scott Sharp needs to know where Fellows is on the racetrack, and at the moment, he is in ninth place. That is not a good position for Fellows to be in to capitalize on the troubles of Scott Sharp. Fellows, in fact, has been going backward as he had started in that third row alongside Sharp. Sharp went back to 28, now trying to regain positions. Fellows, however, has slipped back to that ninth spot, so it's not been a good afternoon thus far. Car off course, R.K. Smith. He was making his first Trans Am run of the season in the Acer Camaro, and they're getting ready for a full 1994 season, kind of getting a head start on it. And this has got to be very disappointing because Smith had been a good, solid runner here in three days of practice leading up to this race. And a man who at one stage had an ambition to be, look at this bodywork here, had an, an ambition to be the oldest ever rookie at the Indianapolis 500. He didn't make it yet. Started racing at age 43, currently 55, but his day is done. And look at here. Sharp now edging past Randy Ruhlman. He is right now behind Greg Pickett. And it is now 15th and 14th in those two spots. Actually, 14th and 15th. <laughs> Pickett has the advantage. Now, let's go back up front, and we'll go on board with Tommy Archer. Remember, he started from the pole, currently running in third place. And let's look at the footwork here, Derek Daly. This is often a fascinating look at the type of work a driver does. And look at the left foot. It just sits there. Mainly uses the right. Sometimes you see drivers jump on the brakes with their left foot. All right, uses the right. Looks very gentle. We don't see any gear changing here. Look, we actually heard a gear change. Here we go. Here, heel toe. There's the classic heel toe where you flip the throttle with the right side of the foot and you very quickly jump on that clutch pedal as you change. Look, no clutch on the up change. We're seeing the footwork from the red dot number three. Now you can watch him work around the circuit and you can watch his feet working inside the cockpit here in the box in the lower left. There's a gear change, doesn't use the clutch. Watch on the down chain. Yes, he does. One, two, go down two gears. These gearboxes are good enough. They're straight changes. Remember, no synchromesh, 
So you can just literally yank that gearbox lever into the next gear. And you see how quickly it happens now. Watch the braking. Side of the foot, here you go, side of the foot, lifts the engine, lifts the engine, synchronizes those gears, picks that lower one. A fascinating bit of insight, some great camera work where you can actually get a real feel for what the driver is experiencing inside that cockpit. He is battling in third position in the show zone dot number three, looking for his second victory of the year, but disappointed after starting on the pole, losing the lead to Baldwin, and now into second place in front of him is Gentilosi. Let's go again to Pitt Road and Jan Bikas. When you guys are checking in and watching those pedals and you're watching the camera, you can see exactly what's happening with the clutch. Jack Baldwin, when he did his qualifying run here, he said he never lifted his foot off the throttle and he did a drag race type of shift between each gear. He says he doesn't do it in the race, but it is a pedal technique that he uses right now that got him in the position to do that. We also checked in with Tom Gloy. Right now they say there's something wrong with Ron Fellows' car on the right rear. They're not sure what. Fellows currently listed in eighth place. We're looking at the leader. It's Baldwin who got the break on the green. Running second is Gentilosi. Then it's Tommy Archer, George Robinson, and Bobby Archer, your top five. More from Middle Isle after this. Eric Daly and Jan Bikas, I'm Gary Gerald as we welcome you back to Trans Am Racing at beautiful Mid-Ohio, looking back from the leader, Jack Baldwin, who's been on top since the opening green flag. Paul Gentilosi continues to run on the second spot. Scott Sharp, who's battling that, in trouble now in the carousel. That's Pete Musser in the 88 car, who slides off with a little nudge from Sharp. Sharp continuing to move his way up through the field. May have picked up some damage in that particular little move, but look at him, now battling Greg Pickett. He has taken over 12th place. Pickett trying to get inside Dorsey Schrader in the 40 car. Dorsey, who is driving the Von Hausen Auto Parts Camaro for the first time this weekend in only his third Trans Am race of the year, hanging on to the position, but right behind him now are Pickett and Sharp, who come from the rear of the field. Well, when you're on the charge from behind, sometimes you have to take chances. Look at the damage to the front spoiler on that Chevrolet Camaro. That will definitely alter the handling, but here it is, down the inside. He's committed, he doesn't quite get the job done makes contact and luckily he was the one that initiated the contact and he got away with it lucky for him and now he stalks greg pickett as both he and pickett get by dorsey schrader schrader who had been running strong in practice sessions with high hopes today now losing two positions jeff Turner leads this group going by there's ron fellows of the blue number four mustang with Tom Bloy, and now they have cracked the top ten yeah, but it's not good enough for the championship. He needs to be a leading contender in this race if he's to keep his championship hopes alive. This season started so well for Fellows with win after win, and then it just fell away. But we get a good opportunity here to see our telemetry care of Ford Electronics coming in real time from Ron Fellows' car here. Numbers going up. You saw 167 miles per hour before he had to get out of the throttle. And he'll see his main championship contender behind him very shortly because that's Greg Pickett and that's Scott Sharp right behind him. Now he's in second gear, no throttle. See the throttle bar. He gets out of it. He's only flat for all, oh, just about second and a half. But you see over the top of the hill, he still does 95 miles an hour. He's in third gear through there. Revs go up, the speed goes up. And Pickett oh, slides look inside. This. Look out, there's contact between the two. Fellows holds on for the moment, but Pickett has a close call, and Sharp is ready to pounce. Three cars battling now in positions 9, 10, and 11. Scott Sharp's nose and spoilers already secondhand, so if you break it one time, you might as well go ahead and use it again. Look at Pickett, though. Pickett, big challenge on Fellows. They sweep into turn number one. Pickett has the line. Pickett has the position. Greg Pickett, who started 38th, is now taking over the number nine spot. Sharp makes a bid now. Same place, under braking. Doesn't make it, doesn't make it past his championship contender. But you can see here, Fellows is in trouble. A front runner, race winner, consistent, not fast enough today. His championship hopes may be going out the window with whatever handling problem he has with that car. Now he has a problem with Scott Sharp down his inside. Sharp knows that if he can finish in front of Ron Fellows, no matter where Fellows finishes, the championship belongs to Sharp for 1993. And he has made the pass. 
So indeed, the frustration of what has been recent races for Ron Fellows compounded now as he's seen Sharp come from way back to regain a spot in the top 10. We continue seeing terrific action all the way through the field at Mid-Ohio. Baldwin, Genelosi, and the Archer Brothers continue to set up the pick. Watching a race for sixth place, Irv Hare in 13 has slid by Mitch Wright to pick up the position. They have been together on the course virtually since the start of the race. And it looks like Irv Hare has the slight advantage now. Here's a car spinning. It's Musser once again, the California driver, number 88, finds himself off course. This time, no help. He got banged out of the way earlier by Scott Sharp. And here's Jim Moyer now, Pocono, Indiana driver, number 96, with significant front end damage. Going to try to limp it back around and perhaps head toward the pits. Much of that nose wing having been destroyed in the excursion off the circuit. That's definitely a trip to the pit lane because if he doesn't make it voluntarily, yes, he does. I'm sure the SCCA officials would invite him in for an interview. Look at this. Jim Stevens has found the sandbox. And look at those wheels spin as he gets out of trouble and gets back on the circuit. Jim Stevens in the 65 Mustang. See what he did? He dragged a lot of that sand. In fact, he still drops it on the racing line. That may have repercussions for some of the following cars take a look now and see if we can get an indication of what happened. Here's the spin by Musher. That seemed to be a harmless spin coming through turn one. He simply backs the car off the racetrack. Looks like he's safely out of the way. And in fact, he was safely out of the way, so there was no contact between him and the number 96 car. So we check with our leader. It's still Jack Baldwin of the Hot Wheels Camaro. He's so hungry for a first victory. The crew is saying how focused and how hungry he seems to be this weekend. And the fellow they affectionately call the Bear got the jump on the green flag. And it was a real muscle job as they took that flying start down the backstretch. But he has been very strong since. Herb Hare continues his attack. He picked up a position a moment ago, and now he gets another one as he slides by George Robinson. So Herb Hare has moved into the top five. He is currently fifth. Robinson drops back to the sixth spot. So Herb Hare, who started back on that fourth row, steadily, consistently picking up position here to become a contender, still hoping that he can close in and get sight of the leaders. Baldwin, Genelosi, and the Archer brothers continue to set the pace. And notice how George Robinson did not really contest that challenge. His team was almost decimated at Watkins Glen earlier this year when he crashed his primary car. And the second car, which is often driven by Paul Gentilosi, was also badly crashed by Joe Vardy. So they had to miss the races since then and returning to the series. So good to see Robinson back as he always runs at the front. Absolutely. And it's good to see Herb Hare back in the regular Trans Am Series. Second in points in 88 and 89. Eight times a career winner. Now running in fifth place. Now let's go back and check further on the exploits today of Greg Pickett and Scott Sharp. They continue to run in tandem. And they've come from 38. That's where Pickett started. Sharp had the incident that dropped him to 28. And now they have both worked their way back into the top 10. Pickett is currently listed in eighth position. Sharp is ninth. And Greg Pickett knows how to win races here. He won here last year. He also won here back in 86. Probably hasn't had the type of year that he wanted. He really anticipated that he could make a legitimate and serious run for the championship. It hasn't quite fallen his way. You can see he's in the older style Camaro with Scott Sharp, in fact, who will marry Greg Pickett's daughter. So we may have a bit of a family feud here if Scott tries something that is uh, not too father-in-law's liking. The wedding, I believe, scheduled for December. Here comes the Raid X Camaro. Scott Sharp takes a look right alongside. Now, does he have the position? Pickett tries to pinch. He's not going to be able to do it. And Scott Sharp slides by Greg Pickett. Now, Pickett had, you know, they're still side by side. Look at this, body contact? No, but Pickett, you can see he was almost going to attend what Jack Baldwin did at the start with Tommy Archer, but he wasn't quite, quite close enough. The Scott Sharp is not over yet, though. Look at this. Couple of Camaros, one the factory Camaro driven by Sharp, currently has the advantage, the independent effort of the veteran driver and former Grand Am champion Greg Pickett is running right behind him, and they're having a good battle all the way around the circuit. Their average race speed thus far, 95 miles per hour of this demanding scenic 2.25 mile course at Mid-Ohio. Sharp came from 28 to 8. 
in 14 laps. Jack Baldwin still the pace setter. No change up front with the exception of Herb Hare now in the top five. Now we continue to watch these two veteran drivers, Scott Sharp and Greg Pickett, running seventh and eighth at the moment after their long drive from the back of the field, but they're still 25 seconds behind the front-running Jack Baldwin. Here, in fact, is, I believe, Kim Pickett, soon to be Mrs. Scott Sharp. That'll be taking place in December. We are able to confirm that. George Robinson suddenly coming onto the pit road. The hunting ranch Camaro number 74 has encountered a problem. He was running in seventh place. Just made a quick stop. I saw the crew chief jump in, have a word with him. They did try and fix something. I hope, it, I hope they did get a finish, but George Robinson out of the leading pack at the moment, but a very fast stop. Jim Stevens now coming by, and look at this, Mitch Wright in the heated rookie of the year battle with Jeff Brenner has pulled off course. Wright had been running in the number six spot. And he has encountered problems in the Highway Master Dodge. And for the second consecutive race, bitter disappointment for Mitch Wright. And he was only five points behind Jeff Perner in the Nimrod Press Rookie of the Year standings. So Jeff Perner will now stretch that points lead if he can continue to run uh, where he is right now, which is in the top ten. Remember at Elkhart Lake in the last event, there were early problems for Mitch Wright, and almost a lap later, there were problems for Perner, and both of them ended up going to the sidelines, and there was no change in the five-point difference. Looked like there could be a big swing, but that wasn't the case. Let's check now. Here's the, the traffic jam. Now, traffic can often play a part in these races. Paul Gentilosi, who is a consistent second, not able to challenge Jack Baldwin at the moment, needs some help from the traffic jam here. There's Gentilosi there in the familiar number 28. Whoa, slides down the inside. Got by Mark Fieldsticker, has Jerry Clinton in front of him, separating him from the leader Baldwin. Baldwin working through the traffic, passing uh, Dale Phelan in the 66 machine. Now there are two cars between he and Gentilosi, and a third about to be put between them. Baldwin handling that traffic very, very impressively. It's always a row. It wasn't cured. Whatever it was, it wasn't cured, and he has to come back in. And let's go to Jan Bikas. George Robinson came into pits a few laps ago because of transmission problems. They looked inside, said there's nothing we can fix right now. He went back out on the course, tried the gearbox, but cannot get it to select the gears. Robinson's day is over. Meanwhile, back on the circuit, this race for second place, Gentilosi in his new Camaro has the second spot. Tommy Archer, who started from the pole of the Shell Zone Dodge, Continues to race third, and here's the view that Tommy Archer is seeing right now as he tries to get up there and peck away and somehow get into position to get that spot back from Gentilosi. Well, Paul Gentilosi needed some help from traffic, and he was to try and get up to Jack Baldwin. In fact, the opposite happened. Gentilosi got stuck behind the traffic and dropped back, and has allowed Tommy Archer, whose feet we can now watch on our foot cam again, work very hard to try and catch Gentilosi. Gentilosi bossed out in that duel with the traffic jam. Once again, watching that footwork as he continues to stalk Paul Gentilosi. Hard on the power. There's the gear chain on the brake. By the foot. You often hear his heel toe. In fact, that's a little bit of a misnomer. It's actually ball of the foot, side of the foot is the more common down changing technique used by race drivers. It's a race for second place. Gentilosi has the advantage for the moment, but now as they come into traffic, this could be an opportunity for Tommy Archer. We continue to watch Archer's feet. Putting a lap on Mitch Bender. Uh, you, again, you just hope that traffic sees you because if he sees the car ahead of you, you're going to go with it. Sometimes the second car in line is the one that's not sighted by the car that's being overtaken. That can often cause lots and lots of problems. And as these two continue to fight for second and third, they have slipped four and a half seconds behind Jack Baldwin, who handled the traffic very, very nicely, protecting his lead in a bid for his first Trans Am win of 1993. Trans Am competition at Lexington, Ohio, the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The race for second heating up. Gentle Losey, the black and white Camaro, trying to hold off the red and white Dodge of Tommy Archer. And Archer is just leaning all over him now. And they have closed up. Out of within two and a half seconds, the front running Jack Baldwin. Let's go to the pits. 
Here's John Mikas. We checked in with team manager of Rocket Sports, which is the team that has built this car and is owned by Paul Genelosi. They say right now we're pacing ourselves. And what has happened is that Tommy has come up behind us after we got stuck in traffic, and now we're gaining on Baldwin at about a second a lap. They, and also Paul Genelosi, knows how to work the tires during the race. They say, we have not given everything we have just yet. Paul Genelosi has not won at this racetrack. He's always been a strong contender, but his Rocket Sports cars, driven by Darren Brasfield, have had great success in past Trans Am events here. Now, there are the three leaders here. Now, Genelosi may be running faster, or Baldwin may be controlling the pace. The fastest lap of the race so far, in fact, has been set by Jack Baldwin at a, a 124.6. That was earlier. Maybe he cannot reproduce that type of speed now when he needs it when he's being challenged. Paul Genelosi was recalling earlier today, humorously, the first time he ever raced a sports car on a road circuit. It was here in mid-Ohio. It was in 1981. He was a drag racer. And he said he got so far off into the woods, it was a wonder they ever found him. But his racing career has really progressed. And he's had a terrific season in the IMSA, IMSA Exxon Supreme GT Championship Series, where he's won a couple of events this year. And right now, running a strong second, trying to hold off Tommy Archer, chasing Jack Baldwin. In fact, he said he got so far out of the racetrack, he had to buy a ticket to get back in. Yep, Paul Genelosi, colorful driver in a brand new race car that he and his men build. Oh, there's Jim Stevens of the 65 Ford Mustang trying to get back in the right direction after a quick excursion off into the grass. No apparent damage. Now, we have an interesting situation developing here. Genelosi is embroiled in his own battle trying to hold off Tommy Archer, which normally slows you down, yet both of these cars are actually reeling in Jack Baldwin. So we may yet again in Trans Am Racing be setting up for a classic duel between three cars here. And this, in fact, is the first time that we've seen them within real shouting distance. They're only about 10 car lengths or so back as they continue to close a bit on Baldwin. The lengthening shadows at Mid-Ohio. And as this race moves toward its waning stages, Let's go back and check on the progress of Ron Fellows, currently in ninth position. We'll take a look at the telemetry once again, Derek. Bit of a struggle. We can see that. Good, though, to watch the real-time telemetry here given to us by Ford Electronics. This is one of the developments where you can actually see and hear and almost feel what goes on under the bonnet of these cars in the engine. See full throttle, 74, 76, 77, 78, just for a quick minute there, or a quick second. You can see the speed that they do, but Ron Fellows, who will lose this McKenzie backing for next year also, really thought he could win the championship. It just hasn't worked out. And Tom Gloy Racing, they've had more than their fair share of accidents this year, not all their own fault. It's certainly been frustrating after great success early in the season for Ron Fellows. He has won three events this year, struggling today, staying in the top ten, but his championship hopes dwindling by the moment. Sharp, remember, has worked his way back up in front of Fellows. He's in sixth position, and all Sharp has to do is finish in front of Fellows, and the championship is his. Fellows again listed in the number nine position. Now, let's see how things are going up front. From the roof, looking back off the Hot Wheels Camaro of Baldwin, there's a lap car in between, but that next car you see is driven by Paul Gentilosi. Remember, Derek, we talked early about that incentive of the bonus money for a non-factory Chevrolet team. It could be a huge payday for Paul Gentilosi. He could pick up better than 27,000 in bonus money if he was able to win this event. Now, let's go back to Jan Bikas once again. Huh? As we look at that first trio, a first and update on Baldwin. He has had his windshield oiled, and it's very late in the day, which means that coming up this front straightaway, he's having a very difficult time seeing. They say that's not what's making him drop back. It's that the other two behind him are catching up. Let's also remember, because it's late in the day, it's cooler. The second and third place cars have the softer 430 tires. Baldwin does not. Now, here comes Tommy Archer. Part of, okay, Gary. Hang on for a second, Jan. Archer's alongside in traffic. Genelosi trying to hang on to the spot. Looks like he will maintain. No, there's contact. Genelosi spins off course. Now, can he get back on without losing more than one position? He's sideways again, and he will lose more than one spot. Now, can he keep the power up? Wheels start to spin on the grass. Archer is into second, and Genelosi is watching other cars stream by. 
And we were talking about the bonus money as an incentive. Well, maybe wave goodbye to all of that. Let's take a look once again. And watch this. Gentle Rosie is on the inside line. Archer realizes he can't get it done. Look at this. Down the inside and drop kicks him on the way to the apex. Gentle Ozzy takes that brand new design of Camaro over onto the grass and he doesn't quite manage to keep it straight. Otherwise, he would have been right behind Archer exiting that corner. There will be words between those guys at the end of this event. He came within a hair of losing just one position. Here's the onboard view. That's how you do it. From the inside, it was gentle contact, but just enough to spin Paul Gentle Ozzy. Well, now, how far back did Genelosi drop? We believe he's in fifth place. So it could have been a lot worse, but the thing for Genelosi, he may have lost an opportunity to have a chance to challenge Baldwin for a rich payday and a win. But right now, he's back in fifth spot. Tommy Archer has taken over second. Bobby Archer is running third. In the fourth position, Irv Hare, also a beneficiary as he moves up a spot. Well, we'll be back to see how it shakes out here at Mid-Ohio in just a moment. At Mid-Ohio, the race is for third place. Irv Hare, who's battled his way forward from an eighth starting position, challenging Bobby Archer, pulls alongside, smokes a break, has position. Will he be able now to get it? Archer answers back. They rub paint on the side of the car, and they still, nobody backing off. Hare's right there once again. He has position on the inside a third time, and they bang together again, and Irv Hare takes over the third spot. How can you get away with side-by-side -side racing like you see in Trans Am? Nobody gives up because they realize that the next turn we have a big one here in the gravel trap. And a second car makes contact. Can't tell who they are just yet. Two cars. Here's a third car sliding. That's Phelan in 66. Here comes a fourth car. Obviously, something slick on the surface. Four cars sliding through. Here comes everybody. Five, six cars. There's Peel Sticker coming in in the 99 car. We'll get a full course yellow. Obviously, oil, water, some type of fluid on the course. We've seen six cars skate off into the sand trap. Well, that yellow may have come just a little bit too late. But remember, they're unsighted as they come over that hill. And when you're fully committed at the speeds they're doing, this is the result here. Most unfortunate. Somebody blew up, though, on the racing line. So let's go back just a couple of moments before the incident and take a look at that great battle between Bobby Archer and Irv Hare. This was for third place. Now hang on to your seats and watch what happens here because this is side-by-side -side racing at its best. Irv Hare trying to pass Bobby Archer. He goes round the outside, doesn't get it done. Look at this, down the inside. Now normally you have the job done here, but Bobby Archer says no and he fights back they're side by side, and again, Irv Hare comes down the inside. But watch what he does here. On the power, little love tap right there, and he gets third place. Now, within seconds of that incident, at the same spot on the racetrack, watch what happens here. Pete Musser in car number 88 hand grenades his engine. The oil or fluid comes out on his rear tires, and suddenly, with oil or fluid on the line, all hell breaks loose. A tremendous impact on the tire barrier for Musser. Then Thomas Volk in number 95 slides through, followed by Dale Phelan in number 66. Here comes Mitch Bender at number 18. And it's still not over because Mark Peel sticker also becomes a victim in number 99. And there's Deborah Gregg in number two, skating across that slippery surface. Five cars in the sandbox. Greg disabled as well. And the yellow flag, of course, is out. And that means we've got a whole new race. Remember, Baldwin is led from the top. But Archer and Hare will now be right off his back bumper. Found time at Mid-Ohio. After a lengthy yellow flag to clear the racetrack of debris, nose to tail, the front runners tightly bunched together. Let's quickly go to Jan Bikas for this report from Pit Road. We checked with Jack Baldwin before the race, and he said, with the hard tires that I've chosen, if we go back to green after a caution with 10 laps to go, I can win. Anything less than five, I can't beat the guys with the 430 tires. They right now are in second, third, fourth, and fifth place. It's going to be exciting. Also, 
Genoesi is still very, very hot. He pulled up alongside Tommy Archer and pointed to him and says, I'm going to get you as the green flag comes out, Gary. All right, we look at them on the front straight away now. A pretty good run for Jack Baldwin. They'll sweep toward the left-hander, a high-speed corner. Archer runs second. Irv Hare is third. Bobby Archer is fourth. And Genoesi is fifth. Nobody with a bid or a challenge at the moment as they executed a high-speed run to the green. But here comes Archer with a look now on Baldwin. Oh. Baldwin hits the brakes in the carousel, and it's Archer right there. Remember, Archer is on the softer tire. They have more grip, particularly in these early stages. And the Dodge is also one of the fastest cars down the straight. Here's the run down the back straight. This is where they heat 165 miles per hour. Oh, Baldwin's down the inside, protecting that inside line. A bit of defensive driving. Hey, Archer, Archer in trouble. Tommy Archer put his nose in there and lost it. And now he's already back to sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth place as he gets it restarted. So he made his bid. Another car goes off course, deep in the pack, not one of the contenders. So Baldwin has survived the first challenge, and Tommy Archer has gone by the wayside. He slips back to tenth position. And just about survived. The challenges will mount, though. We're back inside with Tommy Archer. Look at the positions he lost. His challenge is effectively over. But Baldwin, Baldwin could still be in trouble. The challenge now comes from Irv Hare, who started eighth. He's now second. Bobby Archer, who was fastest in the final practice session, races third. All Gentilosi, who was challenging early, had the incident with Tommy Archer, dropped back to fifth. He now picks up a position as well. Oh, look at Bobby Archer. He's right there behind Irv Hare. Now, under braking, look how much Irv Hare closed up. Irv Hare closed up on Baldwin. Look at the Archer brothers again. Here down the inside. Bobby Archer on the inside. He rubs paint with Irv Hare. Bobby Archer into second place. Hare shuttled back to third. And he returns to Genelosi now coming and making a move on Irv Hare. He gets by Hare. Picks up third position. It's all beginning to happen. Bobby Archer down the inside, returns a long tap and loses out. Or makes the Irv Hare lose out. Look at Hare down the inside of Genelosi. He gets it back from Genelosi. Fighting now first through fourth position, running in the fifth spot. Let's not forget about Scott Sharp. He can clinch a championship in just over a lap and a half. Winding it down at Mid-Ohio. Baldwin has been the leader all the way, but he's had to survive a couple of terrific challenges. And Bobby Archer has come all the way from ninth place on the grid. He was very quick in that final practice session when they run the full tank and they race set up. Now, his form in that session is showing through here, but Jack Baldwin has still managed to control most of the race. He doesn't have long to go to try and win this one. He'll in fact be looking at a white flag as they come up the hill onto the front straightaway. 2.25 miles to go. And it's about a three-car length lead. No, it's much less than that. Into turn one. Bobby Archer with a challenge. Baldwin holds them off. Hits the final lap at Mid-Ohio. And we've got a classic shootout. Baldwin, who has not won this year, the defending series champion. Archer, who's looking for his first career Trans Am win. And Bobby stalks one car length back in the carousel. Headed for that high speed back straightaway down the hill at 165 miles per hour. And this is the drag race, and Archer is three or four car lengths behind. He's not close enough to go down the inside under braking, or is he? No, he's not. He's not close enough yet. This is the uphill drag. Uphill, where we saw Archer go side by side earlier. He knows how to do it. Should those front two have problems, Hare is ready to pounce racing third. Running out of time, Bobby Archer stalking Jack Baldwin. Less than a half lap to go. Baldwin in the Camaro. The dodge of Archer takes another look. Hit the curve. May have lost one or two car lengths and will now try to rally for a last gasp effort as we come toward the final turn. He hit the curve and he lost two to three car lengths and that has given Baldwin just enough breathing space. Or has it? Here comes Hare, here comes Genelosi, first through fourth, nose to tail, up the hill, checkered flag in sight, Jack Baldwin gets the job done, Bobby Archer is second, third to Hare, fourth to Genelosi, and a disappointed Tommy Archer will be back in the back, but look at here, the Rainex Camaro of Scott Sharp, savoring his second Trans Am Championship, the teammates have a huge day at Mid-Ohio, Baldwin with the win, Sharp with the title. We'll hear from them 
as we come back to what has to be a jubilant scene in the victory podium in just a couple of moments. ESPN. Look at this jubilant trio at Mid-Ohio, a championship for Sharp, a race win for Baldwin, Buzz McCall, and Chevrolet have won a fourth straight manufacturer's championship. Let's hear from them as we go to Jan Beacus. You're right, Gary. This has got to be the happiest trio in Trans Am Racing. First, Jack, congratulations. You said you couldn't do it on those hard tires with only that many laps to go. Well, you know, I knew it was going to be tough. Uh, I kept as much heat as I could in them, but during the last caution, I lost my power steering. I called in. I said, you boys, you're not going to believe this one. And that made it really, really tough. And uh, I tell you, when Steve called me and uh, told me there was one lap to go, I, I, I just, I said, I can do it. I know I can do it because I thought there was like five to go and I was oh boy, I'm having, there was so much oil on my windshield, I couldn't even see the bridge, much less the corner. So, uh, you know, I'm just real fortunate and I've got to say uh, thanks to everybody at American Equipment Racing, Buzz McCall and Goodyear and, and uh, my Mattel Hot Wheels Camaro ran fantastic all day long. Thank you. Let's talk to him, Buzz. It's your birthday. What a birthday gift this could be. Huh? What a present. What a present. I, I've had a lot of great presents in my life, but to have Scott repeat as a champion and have Jack win the race as the defending champion is really, truly a, a, a great day for the team. And speaking of champion, here he is. Congratulations, Scott. The champion for 1993. How's it feel? Well, it wasn't pretty, but uh, we got the job done, I guess. I don't know what happened early on with my brakes, but uh, that's past history now. I just got to thank the crew. They did a hell of a job all year. Got to thank God, Chevrolet, and my sponsor, Rain. It's been a great year and finally ended and uh, win the championship. It's great. They're happy here at American Equipment Racing. There'll be a lot of celebrating tonight, Gary. So indeed, a most memorable day for Buzz McCall's team. Baldwin with the win. Bobby Archer equals his career best with a second place finish. Air, Gentilosi, Sharp clinching the championship fifth. Tommy Archer, after that disappointment with the challenge, settles for sixth. Pickett, Turner, Fellows, Dorsey, Schrader complete the top ten. And on down through the line, you take a look at how they finished after a wild afternoon of racing at Mid-Ohio. Checking the championship point standings, well, Sharp has settled it. He's won his second in the last three years. Fellows over Baldwin and Bobby Archer, Tommy Archer completing the top five with just one race remaining. For Jan Bikas, for Derek Daly, I'm Gary Gerald. We hope you've enjoyed a great afternoon of Trans Am Racing in Mid-Ohio. We congratulate the team of Baldwin.